everyone. Uh, I do have someone filling in for Audrey. Are you there? Yes. Well, thank you for coming on our program, Audrey. Uh, we're going to talk about the history of the Sabbath tonight. I, I have touched on this subject many times in our program, and, but I wanted to dedicate just one night just to the history of the Sabbath. And so we're going to try and go through and prove to you some of the unbelievable fallacies that have been presented by history because the people in Europe and in England and in Scotland and in those early time frame in the, I guess, the first century, they were all Sabbath keepers, Saturday Sabbath keepers. And I want to go through and I want to prove that tonight. And not only did they keep the Sabbath, they kept it... In, to the 13th and 14th centuries, some of them, and some of them even longer than that. So we're going to start from the time of Christ, and I've already done a program where I went through and I showed that the people in Jerusalem were keeping Saturday for the Sabbath, and we know that because the Roman historians, at least many of them who actually were recording the battles between them and Rome, between Jerusalem and Rome, how they went into on the on the Sabbath day of the Jews on the day of Saturn. The day of Saturn is Saturday. So it's no doubt that they were keeping Saturday before the time of Christ and that the Messiah came and said it was his uh, custom to be in the synagogue on the Sabbath day. So he was also keeping the Sabbath. He was keeping the seventh day with his disciples. Now, we're going to pick up from there, and we want to talk about Josephus and see what he said about it. We know Josephus was the historian for the Jews, and this is what he wrote. He wrote, there is not any city of the Greeks, nor any of the barbarians, or any of the nations whatsoever, which our custom of resting on the seventh day has not come. Mm -hmm. So what he's saying is that everybody was keeping the Sabbath. And, I, you know, this is so different because, Audrey, when you read history, they present history in a different way. They present history that the Roman Catholic Church Christianized all the people in Europe and that they were Sunday keepers. And that's the mm -hmm. way it's presented to us in history. Exactly. That the people were keeping the Sabbath day, the seventh day, uh, which is Saturday, they were keeping that day from the time of Christ, before the time of Christ, and, and way into history. Now, I'm going to read what, another quote here that's going to pretty much explain what I'm saying here. It says, uh, it's a quote from Polycrates, and Polycrates was the apostle in Smyrna, and he was actually one of the apostles that worked under Polycarp. Now, we know Polycarp worked under John uh, the disciple, the disciple John. So you had John the disciple, then you had Polycarp, and then you had Polycrates. And this is what he quoted. He says, The bishops of Asia, observing the custom handed down to them from their fathers, were headed by, headed by Polycrates. He indeed had also set forth the tradition handed down to him in a letter he addressed to Victor, the church of Rome. He said, Therefore observe the genuine day. Moreover, John, who rested on the, on, upon the bosom of God, or the Lord, also Polycarp, and the bishop and the martyrs, and then it mentions three or four different martyrs, all of these observed the 14th day of the Passover according to the gospel, depriving in no respect, but followed the, the rules of faith more more I, Polycrates, who am the least of all of them, according to the traditions. And there were seven, my relatives, who were bishops, and I am the eighth, and my relatives also observed the day. All right, so it was talking about, it was talking about Passover here more specifically, but it's showing that that this custom of keeping Passover and keeping the Sabbath were handed down from the time of John. I mean, that's what he's writing, and that the person who's recording this, this is 
is Eusebius, who wrote in the third century. He was around at the time of uh, Constantine. So, so Linda, evidently they must have been having some controversy started to be um, seeping in for him to have to even clarify things like that, wouldn't you say? It, exactly, and that was what basically happened. In 155 A.D., Polycarp went to Antecedus, who was the bishop in Rome at that time, because the bishop in Rome had changed the date of Passover to the, the first Sunday after the equinox. Uh -huh. And so what he went and he discussed it with him and said, you know, please don't change it because we've always kept the 14th of, right. of Nisan. And, and so that is what they call the Quatidesmian controversy, which went on and on and <laughs> on through history because they continually were fighting over Passover and the Sabbath. Those were right. the two big issues all through history. Now, the, he goes on, Polycrates goes on, and he says, I therefore, brother, now 65 years old in the Lord, who have confirmed with the brethren throughout the world and have studied the whole of the sacred scriptures, and I am at all alarmed of those things which I am threatened and intimidate me, but they are greater than, for they but they who are greater than I have said, we ought to obey God rather than man, right. which I thought was a really good answer. So what was going on is the first thing that was changed was Passover to um, Easter. Now, there's so many people who go out there and try to find scriptures in the New Testament to try to prove that Sunday is the Sabbath and a Passover is Easter. And in fact, in the King James Version, you know, they changed the word and put Easter there instead of Passover. Right. Because they kind of understood that they thought of it as the same thing, even though they kept it at, at different times. And it's interesting. Go ahead and make, I know you want to make a comment. Well, on Wikipedia, it, it, it kind of goes in hand in hand what you're saying in, in 2002. Arrhenius said that on certain things, the two bishops speedily came to an understanding, while as to the time of Easter, each adhered to his own custom. They, in Polycarp, might have found that their customs for observing Christian Passover differed, Polycarp following the Eastern practice of celebrating Passover on the 14th of Nisan, the day of the Jewish Passover, regardless of what the day of the week it fell. So that shows you that around that time frame is when things, it seemed like they were holding on to it for dear life. But in the, the thing is, Linda, with history, you have to know history to understand, to, to, to put things into perspective with the Bible because if people want to just take something out of the Bible, they don't see that there was no reason for them to have to justify certain things because it was assumed already. I mean, everybody knew you kept the Sabbath. Nobody, there was no controversy at that time. Exactly. And so in 190 AD is when Victor, along with Clement, who was in the Alexandra School, which I need to talk about, he is the one that changed the from the Sabbath, which was Saturday, to Sunday. He was the one that officially did that in 190 A.D. Mm -hmm. Now, that means that the Catholic Church was keeping the Sabbath for almost two centuries. Mm -hmm. So these people who, and I'm not trying to say negative things about people and their beliefs. I, I know people have to come to this understanding because we've been lied to. Right. And, but people go out and try to prove using the New Testament that Sunday was the Sabbath when the Catholic Church themselves kept the Sabbath for the first two centuries. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just kind of, it doesn't even make any sense. And we know that all the Eastern churches and the, when I say Eastern, Eastern Europe and the Western churches were all keeping the Sabbath. Right. Now, the interesting thing is that the Aryans, who were the Germanic tribes that came into Europe, into Western Europe, they came in keeping the Sabbath. They th were surprised when they got there and found out they were considered heretics. Now, I believe the reason that they changed it that is that they looked around and realized that all of the people in Rome were Sunday keepers. Mm -hmm. And in order to get more people into the church, they thought they would compromise. Now, remember that the, the School of Alexandra, I need to just touch on that. The School of Alexandra was started 
by Philo. Philo was closely aligned. It's, well, what the Wikipedia actually says is he was associated with the Pharisees. He, he went from Jerusalem. He actually lived at the time of the Messiah and formed a school in Egypt. And that was the Alexandrian school. And that's where all the anti-Nazi fathers came from. Hmm. You had Clement, you know, now so many of these Nicene teachers, Nicene fathers. Nicene fathers came out of that school and they had a strong hold on the Roman church. Huh. They were closely aligned and closely associated with them. Uh, I think partly because I need to make a comment here that Philo was a Jew. And so we're talking about a lot of the Jewish teachings actually went into the Catholic church. Oh, yeah. And, and so did their customs. Exactly. But they also started merging pagan teachings into the, the Roman Catholic Church. And that started in 155 where they changed to, to Easter and they started keeping the first Sunday. Before that time, before that time, for almost 150 years, they had been keeping Passover. Passover. And before 190 AD, they were, the, they were all keeping Saturday Sabbath. That wasn't it Constantine that, that was a big mover and shaker in the Catholic Church? Constantine did come on the scene a little later on and made it official as a government. Oh, okay. The Roman Catholic Church had already made the change. Wow. Okay. They had already they were already keeping Sunday and when they did that, they opened the doors for a lot of people who who were pagans who did worship on Sunday and they worshipped the sun god on Sunday to come into church. And so it's always been about attendance with a lot of churches. You know? Do you think that, that that's why the Catholic Church, even now, they have services on Saturday and on Sunday? Right. And I noticed that down here. I, I'm not sure exactly why they do that, but I do know that they, they do it. It now, may have been a carryover from years and years ago. It could have been. It's, it's hard to know. But uh, the, now the other proof here that I think is incredible Audrey, is that the Catholic Church themselves admit that they changed it. Exactly. They sure do. They do. <laughs> I think you have a little quote there. Oh, uh, yeah. I wouldn't mind reading that quote. Now, this is from the Catholic Encyclopedia that Audrey's going to be reading from. Yeah, from their own uh, encyclopedia. It says, the, the Catholic Church, on the other hand, after changing the day of rest from the Jewish Sabbath, or the seventh day of the week, to the first, made the third commandment refer to Sunday as the day to be kept holy, as the Lord's Day. He, which is God, claims that one day out of the seven is a memorial to himself, and this must be kept holy. Okay, so now the Catholics are admitting that they made the change. In right. the Catholic Encyclopedia, we're reading from the Catholic Encyclopedia. It, this is actually quoted from the Ten Commandments section of, this, of the Encyclopedia. Right. All right. Now, Cardinal Gibson, who worked out, he works out of New York or did, this is what he wrote. It isn't not every Christian obligated to sanctify Sunday and to abstain on that day, which is, is unnecessary servile work. It is not the observance of this law among the most prominent of our sacred duties. Now listen to this part. But you may read the Bible from Genesis to Revelations, and you will not find a single line <laughs> authorizing the sanctification of Sunday. The scriptures enforce the religious observance of the seventh day, a day that we never sanctify. This is hmm. from his book called The Faith of Our Fathers by Cardinal Gibson. Hmm. Now, I think that's really telling, doesn't oh, yeah. that really telling? Because they admit that they were the ones that changed it to Sunday. We don't know our history, and that part of our history has been left out, that our, our ancestors were Saturday Sabbath keepers. And right. they were that way for centuries, and that is a relatively new change. And we'll get to that, uh, you know, when we get to that part in history, because we're progressing through history, and next week we're going to start talking about St. Patrick's, who he was. We're going to talk about the history of England and the history of Scotland and Ireland and mm -hmm. how the Christianity came to those countries. Mm -hmm. Totally different than what we normally think of. I wanted to make a comment that I'm not setting out to condemn a religion or a sect or a group or a race or anyone in specific. I'm, my point is that I'm trying to do exactly what I, I say in my title, and that is set history straight, to show people what history has been left out. 
And you can't teach religious history without stepping on some toes. I mean, it's just impossible to do that. Yeah. And But, you know, our, our purpose is not to condemn any sect or religion or, or group. And so people need to understand that all we're talking about here is history. You know, we're not here to condemn mm -hmm. a religion or a group. But moving on, I want to read one more quote, and this is from the Catholic Record of London in Ontario. It, it was written September 1st, 1923. It says, Sunday is our mark of authority. The church is above the Bible, and their transference of Saturday observance is a proof of that. So I, I don't know how much plainer the Catholic Church has to make it to people is that they are telling you they were the ones that changed Saturday to Sunday. So right. you can look to your blue in the New Testament to try to prove that Sunday is the Sabbath. And it's there's ways to, to manipulate scripture to make it sound like that. I mean, people can do that, but you have no historical basis. It will not, you cannot be backed up by history because even the Catholic Church was keeping Sunday until almost the third century. Right. And that's just a fact. And, and it seems like the reason that, that the, they're doing that, uh, who did you say, Vic? I mean, uh, Cardinal Gibson, mm -hmm. is because he's only showing the people that, that, of course, he feels that they have that authority. Okay. It follows suit. Yeah, it follows suit. If they have the authority, then all these other churches who came out of the Catholic Church shouldn't, sh shouldn't dispute them. So if they have the authority to change the Sabbath, then they also have the authority to, you know, be the, the, the universal church that they are. And I, I think that's his main point. And I think that's exactly what he was trying to do. Now, in 300 AD, we're going to move on just a little bit here. In 300 AD, something interesting real happened. There was a canon written by the Catholic Church. It was called Elvira. And I don't know why, where they got that name because I immediately start thinking of that song, Elvira. But <laughs> <laughs> their quote is this, that they changed this is what happened with the Catholic Church. They were trying to keep people from celebrating Saturday because they had so many people still doing it. So what they did is they they that we celebrate the extension of the fast every Sabbath. So now what happened was it was their custom in the Catholic Church to fast on the Saturday before Passover or Easter, I should say, because they kept Easter on Sunday. So the Saturday before that, they would they would fast. So they came up with this Elvira ruling, and it basically said every Sabbath mm -hmm. you're going to fast. And their thought is, if we make everybody fast on Saturday, then they'll get sick of Saturday and not keep it anymore. Yeah. And so that was their thought on that, and that that was only passed in the western part of the of of the of Europe. The eastern part of Europe was a totally different ballgame, which we're going to talk about. Now, I'm going to read a quote here from Sozerman. He lived in 400 A.D. He was a contemporary of Socrates. He wrote, the people of Constantinople almost everywhere assembled together on the Sabbath. He's talking about Saturday, mm -hmm. as well as the first day of the week, which his custom is never observed at Rome or Alexander. So what he's saying here is that it was their custom to, to keep Saturday and Sunday on in the Western in Western Europe. So what happened was they were fasting on Saturday, so they weren't working, right? Mm -hmm. And they were going to church on Sunday because the Catholic Church had changed that. So they still were keeping the Sabbath, but they were required to fast on it, okay? Now, they said the Roman and the Alexandrian church, here we go again, Alexander and Rome were closely tied together, never mm -hmm. kept the Sabbath. I mean, that's what they're saying. That it was not their custom to keep it. And they did at one point, but for, for at that time, they were saying that they didn't keep it. Mm -hmm. and, and then it says Socrates added to this, and it says, although most almost all churches throughout the world celebrate the Sabbath, the Sabbath of every week, yet the Christians of Alexandria and Rome, on account of some ancient tradition, have ceased to do this. So, see, they, they were admitting that everybody, these are two historians telling you that they were still keeping the Sabbath, but they were making people fast mm -hmm. on it. 
So, and and I think Audrey, there's a little quote that you have that uh, you would uh, read oh, for yeah. us. Okay, I, let me interject too. It just it's amazing how if you go far back enough in history, the language people use, you can see how gradually things can change because they were saying the Sabbath. But then that's keeping the Sabbath, which it was the seventh day. But that they want that um, they kept the first day of the week, and he was trying to show there's a difference there. The Sabbath, then there's the first day of the week. Exactly, and you know they never did call it the Sabbath. They called it the Lord's Day. They called oh, okay. Sunday the Lord's Day. So that's all through true. history, you will see it written as the Lord's Day, and so that's how they distinguish the difference. They call Sunday the Lord's Day. And they called Saturday the Sabbath, and that's well that's well documented by William Cave, who wrote the history of the disciples. Mm -hmm. He explains that that that's how they dif they distinguish between the two. So well, wanna... oh okay, okay. This is uh, the Sabbath. How you said Sabbatari of Europe was not in considerable force. The church established in Milan kept the Sabbath. That's a Catholic church. It was practice. It was a practice generally of the Eastern churches and some churches of the West. For in the Church of Milan, it seems that the Saturday was held in fair esteem, but that they came together on the Sabbath day to worship Jesus Christ, the Lord of the Sabbath. Okay, so this is the history of the Sabbath. This is a quote from the history of the Sabbath, and it's a quote taken from uh, Socrates back at that time. So he's trying to explain to them that the people were still keeping the Sabbath. They were still keeping Saturday. Now, the heat would, would continually uh, build up over the centuries and people would be punished for doing it. Now, even into the 12th century, there was a nation called Bohemia. And 75% of them were Sabbath keepers. And one-fourth of those people were Sunday keepers. They were Catholics. And so this is a reflection of what was still going on in Europe. We have been told that what happened in Europe is that the Catholic Church again rolled in and Christianized all the people. But what happened is they were already keeping not just the Sabbath, but the Old Testament laws. They had learned that from the disciples because the disciples had gone out from the time of Christ and taught in, in Europe. And you can find that information under uh, William Cave's book that he wrote on the history of the uh, disciples. He goes into detail about each disciple and where they were and what their work was. Very interesting book. But irregardless, they were all keeping the Sabbath and, and it was part of the church. Now, now we want to talk about what happened with the government. And that's when everybody knows about the Council of Nicaea. Yeah. Now, I need to make one point real plain is that what was going on in the Western Europe was that the Catholic Church had had sanctioned a fast on Saturday and Sunday was the Lord's Day and they went to church on Sunday. In the Eastern Europe, they were keeping Saturday and Sunday, but there was no fast. They actually kept the Saturday Sabbath, but they added Sunday just for people who were keeping Sunday. So that was the only reason it was added, but they were still Sabbath keeps. Now, we want to talk about Constantine in 21 AD. The Council of Nicaea actually made a change, and it was a government change. This is the first time the government had stepped in. And the reason that that happened is Constantine had lived during the one of the bloodiest Christian persecutions under Diocletian, and he wanted to make a change. So he decided that when he became emperor, he was going to try and do a compromise between the Christians who were keeping the Sabbath and the pagans who were keeping Sunday. So what he did, he tried to get the two groups to merge, and that was Council of Nicaea. And when they didn't agree on changing, forcing Sunday as a day of worship, then he came in and forced them all to sign the petition for the Council of Nicaea. And if they didn't, they were excommunicated and exiled out of, uh, out of Rome. So the Cyclopedia, I'm going to read what the Cyclopedia says about uh, the Council of Nicaea and Constantine. It says, it was Constantine the Great who made a law for the observance of Sunday, and according to Eusebius, pointed that it would be regularly celebrated 
throughout the Roman Empire before him and even in his time, they still observed the Christian sa Jewish Sabbath. They said the Jewish Sabbath here. Mm -hmm. Now, this is written in Ecclesiastical History, uh, Part 2, Chapter 4, Section 5 in case anybody wants to look up what the, the encyclopedia actually said. There's another quote. They called it the invincible day of the sun. Now, history tells us that Constantine had a dream, that this dream told him that he needed to become a Christian. And that's when he changed in the Council of Nicaea, where he changed Sunday as the day of uh, worship. But really and truly, he didn't actually become converted until his deathbed. And that's the real truth of that. So as we're moving through history here, so you can see the Sabbath being observed. 364, the Council of Laodicea, it says, Christians shall not Judaize and be idle on Saturday, but shall work on that day. Mm. So beginning to heat up and try mm -hmm. to keep people from keeping this, the Sabbath. Now, here's Pope Gregory the First in 640 A.D. These people are still keeping the Sabbath. And he said, if you continue to keep the Sabbath, that the Antichrist will actually be a Sabbath keeper. He'll be a Saturday Sabbath keeper. <laughs> So, you know, and so that's what he was trying to do is instill fear in the people. Fear, yeah. They're, 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 in different ways, they're trying to force people, force them to give up the Sabbath. Right, exactly. You know, as time goes on, you see more and more proof that they were still keeping the Sabbath. They were still keeping the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Even though they had to, to uh, fast on it, they were still keeping it. Um, and I'm just going to show you more proof here. Uh, Sidonius wrote, It is the fact that it was formerly the custom of the East to keep the Sabbath in the same manner as the Lord's Day and to hold sacred assemblies. Now here's the East talking about uh, Eastern Europe. While on the other hand, the people of the West contend for the Lord's Day and have neglected the, the celebration of the Sabbath. So the people are now beginning to make that shift, and they're beginning to keep Sunday. This is how Sunday rolled in. Mm -hmm. The pressure was put on them to stop keeping the Sabbath. Now, there was a split between the Eastern Church and the Western Church. And the Eastern Church was the ones that were still keeping the Sabbath. And the Western Church actually wrote, it was Pope Nicholas I in the 9th century, uh, wrote a letter to the prince of um, Bulgaria and told him that the people needed to start fasting on Saturday. And this infuriated the Eastern Emperor, and he excommunicated Nicholas I. Now, was he a pope? He was a pope. The Eastern group was actually a larger group, which we're going to come to in a minute here. But then in 200 years later, in 1054, the controversy rose again. This was uh, Pope Leo IX excommunicated Michael Solarius, the pope in the East, for not fasting on Saturday. So Michael Solarius sent an excommunication order back to him. Now, they're still keeping the Sabbath into the 10th century here. This is not even what we've been taught. Mm -mm. Uh, these are our people that most of us, uh, our, an our ancestors came out of Europe or mm -hmm. in from those pe those particular groups of people. And they're still keeping this, the, uh, the Sabbath clear into that time. In fact... The church in the East was two, two or three times larger than the Roman Catholic Church. And that's not what you're taught either. You're told, you're told that the Roman Catholic Church just swooped across Europe mm -hmm. and took over. What was actually the case is the Eastern Church, which they called the Assyrian Church, was a huge church. And it, it was like three times larger than the Roman Catholic Church. So it had a great deal of power and a great deal of sway. And we just haven't been told the truth, Audrey. That's just the main thing that, you know, we haven't to been told the truth on purpose, I believe. Right. Well, it, even you don't even have to go back that far because there's a lot of, a lot of uh, people should know, but we don't, that people who came over on the Mayflower kept the Sabbath. Yes, they did. Uh, okay, so I just want to make two comments on how long they actually kept the Sabbath in Europe. One of them uh, is that when the Portuguese arrived in India, and India was any place past east of the Caspian Sea. That's what they called India, believe it or not. And so 
When they got to the church in India, it was called the St. Thomas Church because the disciple St. Thomas was the one that went there and taught them uh, centuries ago. And they brought in the image of the Virgin Mary into uh, the St. Uh, Thomas Church. And the people's response is, we're Christians, we're not idolaters. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was really interesting. And that's the 16th century. Mm -hmm. So they are still keeping the Sabbath. Now, even in Russia, they were again keeping the Sabbath. Let me see if I can read just a little portion of that. It says the, they were called the Muscovite Church. And they, they were Sabbath keepers by the 10th century under the rule uh, rulership of Vladimir of Russia, who adopted the Greek Orthodox religion. And they still, many of them in that particular group, continued to keep the Sabbath into the 15th century, mm -hmm. where they fled to the upper part of the Black Sea so that they can keep the Sabbath. So they began to move uh, to different areas. Now, I th just think that's interesting because these are not the things we're told, Audrey. No. Uh, we, you know, there are people who are Sabbath keepers. Now, we need to, next week we're going to be talking about the history of England, Ireland, and Scotland. And one of the things that you also know is that in those areas where they were also keeping the Sabbath. Now, it was called the Celtic Church, and they came out in strong, strong argument against the Catholic Church when they started to keep the Sunday. Now, now I'm going to read you from The Rise of the Medieval Church by A.C. Flick. It says the Celtics used a Latin Bible, unlike the Vulgate, say so they didn't use the Catholic Bible, and mm -hmm. kept Saturday as a day of rest with special religious services on Sunday. Still, still, they were still going to church on Sunday. Now listen to James Moffat. He wrote the Church of Scotland. That's the book that he wrote. And this is an excerpt from it. It says, it seems to be been the custom of the Celtic church in the early times and in Ireland as well as Scotland to keep Saturday, the Jewish Sabbath, as a day of rest from labor. They observed the set fourth uh, commandment literally upon the seventh day of the week. Mm -hmm. So here you go. Now, yeah. it, it, it's telling you, do you see how that we've been lied to in our history? Is this not the most incredible thing, Audrey? Well, th that shows, too, that the people migrated from... Um, Bohemia, Russia, Germany, all those areas, and then into England and Scotland. Right. And uh, I, I know if you read uh, Fox's Book of Martyrs, there's uh, people who were persecuted because of the Sabbath. And during that Protestant Reformation, so much happened. So they had to flee and they had to go to different places and they kept that with them. They absolutely did. Now, one of the greatest lies that's been told to the people is that St. Patrick's was a Catholic, which we know he is not. Now, we oh, have now I didn't know that. <laughs> now, I actually talked to the the Baptist church about this, and they said, you know, I talk, called their headquarters, and I talked to them about this, and they said, well, yeah, well, we know that. We know that that St. Patrick's wasn't a Catholic. Mm -hmm. And we have two books that came down from St. Patrick's, which tells exactly uh, how many churches he started. He would start a church and he put a book that he put together and he took passages out of the Old Testament and the New Testament and he put it in every church in Ireland. I think he started some 250 churches in Ireland. Now next week I'm going to go into his history in detail, but I want to tell you one thing about him. He not only uh, was not a Catholic, he was very defiant against the Catholic Church. In fact, on Easter they would light a, a bonfire on Easter Sunday morning. That was, a, uh, that was something they did in Ireland if you were Catholic. And he would go up and you were not allowed to light a bonfire until the to the, the king lit his first. Well, this is how defiant he went. He went Saturday before Easter and lit a bonfire. So to show them he wasn't going to follow their their uh, teachings. He had so much power and authority in Ireland that there was a huge revival under him and so many people went back to keeping the Old Testament laws. Now there's a book that he wrote. It's called Leber Ex Legi Moshe and it says it's called the Books of the Law of Moses. Huh. And he's that's the book that he put in every church. Wow. I mean, it, it's just amazing. Now, we know that Ireland and Scotland, all of these began to start celebrating Sunday because they were forced to do it. 
Henry II went into, into Ireland with his armies and forced the Church of Ireland to submit to his rule, and they gave it over to him, and what he did, he, he put them under the rule of the Catholic Church. Mm-hmm. And that was 1172. That's the 12th century. So they're still keeping the Sabbath until that time. Mm-hmm. Now, in Scotland... Malcolm the Great, who was the king, married Mary, Margaret the Queen of England. Margaret persuaded the bishops in Scotland to to try to change to Sunday or, or stop working on Sunday. And when they didn't do that, she used her husband to enforce it. So Malcolm the Great made a decree that everybody had to worship on Sunday. And that started in 1069. So you're so you're seeing that Scotland's still keeping the Sabbath mm-hmm. until the twelfth century, Ireland's still keeping the Sabbath until the twelfth century, and Wales later than that. Mm-hmm. So this is not what we've been taught. We no. we assumed that the Catholic Church rolled in, but what actually happened is the Catholic Church was a relatively small church. Mm-hmm. And it held sway over the Roman Empire, but it had no authority outside of it. And the the Eastern Church made that a point. So I just think it's interesting that that uh, that you know we have such a different perspective than what is actually has happened. Well, you know, it's actually our people, and we when we get to our history, we will find out that many of people in America kept the Sabbath. Two of our presidents, John Adams and John Quincy Adams, were both Sabbath keepers. Yeah. Benjamin um, Franklin too. Benjamin Franklin. The other interesting person is Whitfield. And I, if I had time, I'd read you some of the experts from his. He kept a journal. And so we knew that he kept the Sabbath. And so did John Wesley and Charles Wesley. Now, there's a group of Methodists that once they found this out, they left the Methodist church and formed their own church, which is a Saturday Sabbath keeping church. And I, I want to say, I, I'm trying to remember how many churches actually left. I want to say like 60 churches left. And because they found out that their founder was a Saturday Sabbath keeper. And hmm. we know that the Waldesians kept the Sabbath. Right. They, through history, that's been well defined in all of their history. And they eventually got pushed out of the Alps and went into Holland and met up with the uh, pilgrims, which we talked about earlier. And the pilgrims and the, and the Mennonites, Anti-Baptists, Anti-Baptists, Mennonite, and, and Waldesians are all the same people. So all really? of these people were Saturday Sabbath keepers. That's If you want to go out and read the history of the Mennonite church, transition from the Waldesians into Holland, you could go read it. It's called MennoniteIsrael.org. It's online. It's, it gives you the exact history. So we don't have a lot of time left now. We, we're almost at the end of our program. And Audrey, we want to thank you for being on tonight. And Thank you for having me, Linda. You're welcome. I want to close for tonight and blessings and good night.